In this section, we're going to be finalizing our application and going live to the web. So first, we're going to start off by connecting the rest of our Vue.js app to our backend that we built. So first, you want to head over to bootstrap-vue.js.org. And this is a library for Bootstrap for Vue that we're going to be installing. So you want to click Get Started, and then you just need to run this command here to install it. So then go ahead and just run that command in your terminal. And then while that's installing, let's go and configure it. So go inside of your source folder inside of main.js. Then you want to import that package. And then while we're here, instead of having this hard-coded false, I'm going to set this to our environment variable. So I'll say process environment node env is equal to production. So then above here, we can say view.use and then pass in that library and that'll wire that up for us. And so now we can use this anywhere in our application. Next, let's go into our services and create service for tasks. So I'll just call it task service.js. So first I'll import the HTTP service that we created. And so I'm going to have a function for getting all the tasks. So this will just return HTTP.get and then pass in the task URL. We also have a function for getting a task by its ID. So we'll pass in the ID as a parameter. It'll also be a get method. This time it'll be slash task slash ID. I also have a function for creating tasks. So that'll take in the entire task and it'll send it as a post request and then pass in as a body. Next, we'll also want to delete the task. We'll do that with its ID. And so we'll send a delete request to slash tasks slash ID. Then finally, we need to update tasks. So we'll just send the task to the put method. Then go into your task create view, and we're going to update this. I'm going to go into the authentication and just copy this, since we're going to be using a lot of the same things. And I'll just change this to create task, and this first form group is going to be for the title, so I'll just change all of these. But for the V model, it's going to be task.title, since we're going to be binding this to an object. Then this one's going to be for our body, so I'm going to need to change this to a text area. And don't forget to add the V model for this one as well, task.body. Then I'll just copy this one and then I'll create a due date. And I'm just going to add name up here. I just like to have all my attributes. Then you want to change the type from text to date. And then change the V model as well. And we want to make all of these property names match what we have in our model. That way it's very easy to save this task. Then I'll just change this to create. Okay, then let's go down and finish configuring this. So first change the name to task create. And we're not going to need the auth service. We'll take the task service and then I'll just name this task service. And instead of returning this, we'll return a new object of task. And then this task object will have all the properties that we need. So title, body, and due date. Then down here we can We'll add a property called task and then assign it, that object. And so now we'll change this to the task service create method, which was the create task and then pass in the request. Okay, and then we can just route back to the task all page. Then you want to go back to the task uh, view component. And we're just going to add a link here to the create page since we don't currently have a link for it. So I'm going to wrap this in a div first and then below the heading, I'm going to add a new router link. And I'll just say create task. And so here you want to route to task slash new. And then I'll give it the BTN success class, BTN. And I'll give it a margin of two on the left side. So then in your app, go ahead and go to view tasks. And then you want to click on the create button. It looks like I forgot to add the bootstrap form control class. So go back to the create component. And so then I'll just add that form control class back to this input and that should fix that for us. All right. 
And it looks like I also forgot the placeholder for this. Not a big deal, I'll just add it really quick. So then you want to go back and create your first task. We want to make sure this works. So enter in all the values. And of course, we're not going to see anything yet because we haven't mapped anything. So back in the task all component, we need to make a server call to get all the tasks. So first, let's customize this. So let's create our script tags. And then we'll name it task all. And so we can say before route enter to from next. And so in here, we'll do our server call. So let's go ahead and import the task service we created so that we can make that call. So now I can say task service dot get all tasks dot then. So once that promise is finished resolving, we'll get a response back. And for right now, we're just going to log that response to see what we get. And then you want to add next after that so that we continue routing. So let's go ahead and refresh and see if we get the task back. And you'll see the data there. And we have the one task that we created. All right, so now we can go ahead and display that task. So then let's add our data function so that we can map those values. So we'll have the tasks array. And then we'll have a current task. And actually, I'll just name this current task ID because that's all we need. And that'll be to update a single task. That's how we'll keep track of it. So now let's get rid of this. So now inside of next, you want to pass in VM. So you can say VM.tasks equals res.data.tasks. Okay, then you want to head over to Bootstrap and click Get Started. We're going to use one of their components to display our tasks. And then you want to click Card. And so this card, this is how we're going to display the task, but without the image. So we'll copy that. And then back in Vue.js, we'll scroll up to the top and and actually, I'll just change this to say just tasks. So I'm going to add a margin bottom of four to this parent div. And actually, don't forget to add exact to this link. And so I'm going to create a div below that one. And I'm actually going to wrap the entire thing in a div and give it display flex class and flex column. And then I'm going to take that heading and put that there, right? So basically, that's like our container for everything. And then we're going to have the button and then the card below that. And so I'm going to wrap that card in another div because this div is going to be in charge of holding all of our cards. So we only want to display the cards if we have tasks and there's more than zero, right? So in other words, if we actually have tasks. So I'll set this to display flex and then flex wrap and then justify everything to start. And this will align all of our cards for us. And so this card, we need to create a loop and display one for every single class. And we can do that with V4. So you just add V-4, the name of the variable you would like, and then in, and then the array that you want to loop through, which is tasks. And then you also have to give it a key so that it knows how to uniquely identify every item in that array. And you can do that with VBind colon key. And so we'll use the task ID to uniquely identify each one. And actually that should be underscore ID. And so on this card, I'm also going to give it a few margins. So I want two on the bottom and two on the left. I'm also going to make the text white and then in the background dark. And then we can keep that style. So get rid of this image. And I'm going to get rid of this link down here at the bottom. So for the card title, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in a div because I'm gonna display the date next to the title. So we'll give this a deflex class and justify content between. So right here for the title, you can bind with double curly braces and say task.title. That'll bind to this variable and display whatever task title you have, whoops. And so then below that, I'm gonna display the due date in a span. So you can say task.due date. Okay, and so that justify content center is basically going to space these apart on opposite sides. So then down here, I'm going to create a heading six with card subtitle and margin bottom two. And I'm also going to give it text muted. 
So this will say created by task dot author dot username, right? So that'll just tell you who created the task beneath that. So then down here we'll display the actual body of the task. So I'll say task dot body. All right. So then create a div with the form check and form group class. This is basically going to hold our checkbox for completed. So I'll create an input here of type checkbox, and then I'm going to give it a label, and then it's just going to say completed. And then you can say v if task dot author dot id is equal to store dot state dot user id. So in other words, you can only mark this as completed if you own this task, if you were the creator. Then we can add the class here, a form check input. And then I'll also disable this if the task is completed, right? So once you mark it as completed, that's it. You can't uncheck it. Then we'll bind to the model from the object. And then when you click on it, we'll call a method that's going to mark it as completed. And we'll just call it mark as completed and then pass in the task that we want to mark as completed. So then below that, I'm going to create a div with the same styling, deflex, and justify content between. This is going to hold our buttons, our edit and delete buttons. So I'll just create a router link here for the edit. And the other one is just going to be a regular link for delete. And so I'm just going to copy the same VF from up here because we only want the user to be able to edit and delete if they're the owners of that task. And then here I'll say V click prevent so that we don't link anywhere. And then we're going to say current task ID is equal to this task dot underscore ID. And then we'll give it card link class and BTN BTN danger. I'm also going to set this top to a button. And so I can just say tag button. Then I'll give it the same class card link BTN, but BTN primary. And then, so this is going to route to, and so now I can pass in an object to this. The first property will be the name of the route. And then I can pass in parameters. So I can say params and that'll take in another object. And then the name of the param you want to pass. So I'll pass in an ID and I'll grab the ID from this task. So that'll route to the task edit route and also give it the ID as a parameter so I can use it. So down here, I'm going to create a modal that's going to handle the delete action. So here on this link, I can say v b modal. And then this dot modal one, that should be the ID of the modal that you create, which we'll be creating in a minute. So let's go back over to view bootstrap and then you want to click components and then go to modals. And then we're just going to copy one of their examples for implementing the modal. And so if you click this button here, you can see a quick example of what their modals look like. And that's the ID that I was telling you about, right? So let's go down and I'm going to copy a better one that has all the buttons we need. So let's go down and copy this one, everything except the template tags. And actually we don't need that top button. So we'll just grab this part and then paste that down here. So I'm going to give it the ID of modal one, since we'll need that, this should match this. And then I'm going to change this ref to modal. And this is what we'll use to control the modal in our functions. We don't want to hide the footer and I'm going to center this on the page. Then I'll change the title to delete confirmation, right? So then right here, I'm going to create a paragraph with margins four. And then it's just going to say, are you sure you would like to delete this task? All right, don't need this. And I'm going to copy this button because we're going to basically have one for yes or no. And I'm actually going to put that in a div because I want to style these. And I'm going to give it a width of 100% and then align it to the right of the modal. And then here I can tag this with slot equals modal footer, right? And that'll map up to the modal's footer and it'll place those buttons in there for us. So for this button, I'm going to say slot MD and then the same for this one. And then for this margin class, I'm going to remove that and put margin right one and then get rid of the margin on this one. 
And for the class or the variant, I'm going to just say danger. And for this one, I'll just say secondary. And we want to get rid of this block because we don't want to display block. And I'll change this to delete, and then this one will just say cancel. So this at click is the function that's going to get called when you click this button. And it's basically the same as v dash on colon click. That's just a shorthand for that. So instead of hide modal, I'll say something like delete task. And then for the cancel, instead of hide modal, I'll just say cancel modal. Right, and then I'll just fix this up really quick. And then I'll just wrap this modal inside of its own div. All right, and then so down here, I'm gonna create a div with a margin left of two. And this is gonna be an alert, a bootstrap alert. So I'll give it a div with class alert and alert info. And this will just say no task found, right? So we'll display this whenever we don't have any tasks. And we'll just say v dash if task and task.length is equal to zero. So basically that means we finished doing the server call, but it turns out there's zero tasks. So then let's go down and finish implementing all the functions we need. So right underneath this one, pass in methods. So I'm gonna create one called task is late, and this is gonna take in the date of the task. So let's import moment so that we can use that library to determine whether or not the date is late. So now we can just say return moment, pass in that date and say is before. And so that'll basically tell you if the date you pass it which is a date from a task, is before the current date. Then let's go into asset style sheet, and I'm going to style the modal title and body. I'm going to change the font color to black. You want to add that important tag in there. Then I'm going to create a new class called is late, and it's going to take in a sort of red color to display when the due date is late. All right, so then let's go up and bind to that function and that class. So we can do is say vbind class. So we pass in curly braces, and then you pass in the name of the class, and then the condition. So we'll say task is late, and then give it the task due date. So if this condition is true, meaning the task due date is late, It'll apply that class, which gives it a red font, letting us know that the task is late. Then I'll just give it the class of small. So down here, let's continue. I'm gonna create the cancel modal. And so you can do this with this.refs.modal.hide, right? And so that ref comes from here, right? Anything you tag with ref, that's how you can access it. And then I'm gonna clear the current task ID since at that point we know we closed the modal, right? Then I'll create one for deleting the task. And actually I'll make this async since I'll be making a server call. So first I'll close the modal when the user closes. Then I'll say wait task service dot delete task and then pass in the current task ID, right? So that's why we had that variable. And so then I'm gonna remove that task from the task array. Right, so it won't be displayed in the view anymore. So I need the index of that task. So I can pass in this.task.findindex. And then say find the task whose ID is equal to this.currentID. Right, so that'll give us the index in the array, and now we can remove it. And then we can clear out the task ID after we're done. Then this one will be for mark as completed. We'll also make it async. And then let's create our request object and pass our task. We need to pass it as a parameter as well. So first we'll mark it as completed. Then we'll send it to the server. And actually we don't need to make this async because we don't need to do anything after we do this. So we can just send that request off and then just continue what we were doing. So then let's go up and the class that we created before, which was the is late class, I'm gonna change this to something else. So I'll just call it late.
And it looks like I made an error here. So let me go back and see. So yes, the error here is V click. This should actually be V on. So if you made that same error, go ahead and make that correction. So that should fix all the errors and you should have your task displayed and you should see all the values. One thing I want to fix is this date here. You'll see that it shows a whole date stamp. And we only are interested in the month, year, and day. So what we'll do is create a Vue.js filter to display just the values we want. So go into your main.js file, and then right beneath this, we'll create a filter, and it'll say view.filter, and then the name of the filter. We'll just name it date. Then we pass in the value in a function, which is the date, basically. So if there is no value, then we'll just return an empty string. We don't need to do anything if we don't have a value. Then we want to import the moment library. And so here we can say moment, pass in the date, and then format. We can ask for a specific format string. So we'll say month, day, and then year, right? So that'll fix that for us. And it looks like I made a typo here. So let's go add that pipe in there. So go up to your due date and you just want to pass in the pipe and then date, right? And so that'll automatically filter it for you. First, go ahead and test your completed. So mark that as completed and it should automatically become disabled after you do that. And then I also don't want to display this text as red anymore if it's already completed. So I'll go up here and add a condition. I'll say, and not completed. So you'll see there, once you mark it as completed, it's no longer red. So then we want to test out the delete. And you'll see I made a few errors here. It looks like the text isn't white. So I'm going to go down and take a look. And now I can see that I styled the color black for the modal body, but this text is actually in a paragraph beneath the modal. So I'm going to have to specify that I want it to be in the paragraph here. So right after this modal body, I can just specify P for paragraph and that should fix that. The other problem with the button is that I forgot to remove block on this, so it was set to display block. So now you should see that looking better for us. So now go ahead and test out the delete. And you should see an error if you've been following exactly how I've done it. That's because I forgot to make a change on the server. So what you want to do is go into your dev server folder and task routes and you want to add slash id to this delete method okay i forgot to add that initially so you want to make sure that's there and that should work for you and then you should see this no task found alert there for us so go ahead and create another task and i'm just going to make whatever and then log out and log in to another user now, when you go to view those tasks, you should not be able to see the edit and delete button since we're not the user that created it. Then create a new task under this user. And then you should see those on yours. Okay, so you want to make sure those are mapped up properly. So let's go ahead and finish our edit route. So you want to go into task create and we're basically going to use everything that we did there. So I'm just going to paste that in there and change this to edit task. And this will all still be the same. Instead of create, I'll change this to update maybe. Or save changes, I guess. And down here, I'll change this to task edit. And all of this can stay the same. The only thing we need to change is this create task method. Because we'll be updating it, not creating it. And then I also want to add the before route enter method because we need to grab the task that the user is trying to edit. So we'll go ahead and make that server call to get it by the ID. And then we can grab the params by two dot params dot ID. So once that's resolved, we'll go ahead and grab the response. And so if there is none, we know that the task ID is not valid. So we can just redirect back to the task page. Else, we have the task, so go ahead and pass in the VM like before. And I'm actually going to save this to a constant first because I'm going to make a change to this. I'll say task.due date. And then I'm going to bring in moment because I want to format that date. So I'll say format. 
So you pass in the due date here and then the format that you would like. This one's going to be year, month, and day. So go ahead and import that library. And then afterwards, you want to go ahead and make sure you assign that task to VM. Actually, this should be response. All right, then if you refresh, you should see the binded values from the task that you're trying to edit. So let's go ahead and try to update this and make sure our changes are reflected. And then you should see those updated values now.